Jade, a couple in the framework agreement, if I may. Yeah. Um, firstly, what would you say to those of maybe cynical disposition who, who would suggest that this was purely a mechanism to stop the litigation which, which you described and that nothing else beyond that actually needs to happen? Now you've, now you've put that away. What would you say to that theory? I, I would say that we operate in good faith. And, and I see that on both sides. And that framework agreement, which is an agreement to reach an agreement, put us in a position to reach an agreement, those safeguards that are in place and our commitment to moving from, you know, the divisive nature of the relationship we had to a productive one, for us to be able to make a fundamental transition to our business with the formation of NUCO, to have an investable entity for PIF to be able to invest in that didn't previously exist. For the PGA Tour to you know, be in control of the future of men's professional golf and for us to be partners. Um, if we were gonna end the litigation, we would have just announced that we were ending the litigation. Um, and our teams, are, if you saw the amount of conversation and the time that the PGA Tour, DP World Tour, and PIF are spending um, working forward from a framework to a definitive, I think you'd see that um, the sincerity of the efforts there. And, and specifically on Live Golf, in your mind, does that exist in two, three, five years' time? Because that would seem contrary to the development plans you're speaking about for your own tour. I, I think, you know, there are a lot of questions that are specific questions that are going to come and have come to me as it relates to, and have come to others as it relates to elements of what is in the framework agreement and elements of what we're talking about. I'm not gonna talk publicly about them until we've completed those discussions and I can answer that question specifically and directly. Amen. Jay, you mentioned players reaching out to you wanting to take more of a governance role in the tour. Did you interpret that as an indictment of how the tour has been run over the last few years? I did not. Um, I think there is one thing I'll add, Eamon, is that um, it's not like all of a sudden there was a point in time and a lot of players, you know, reached out to say they wanted to be more involved. If you go back to last summer, if you go to Hartford and the announcements that we made when we were going to be launching a series of designated events to the announcements that we made here, um, and ultimately to the announcement of June 6th and the aftermath of it. We're out every day, you know, Tyler, our player relations team, talking to our players, um, you know, getting their perspective uh, at the, you know, and, and trying to be as communicative as we can about where we are. And I look at this as not an indictment, but a very positive, positive message. And, you know, for us to be in a place where our players want to be more involved, candidly, we've hired a player, an advisor for our player directors. Um, this is a very complex situation. And if you're a player director or you're a member of the pack, this is more complex than any other period of time. Uh, and I feel like we've listened, we've responded, and now we have the right people, the right process in place for us to be able to move forward and determine that future. Um, but you, I, I look at it as a, as, as a positive and something that I and we embrace and quickly embrace. It's, it's a living, breathing thing, you know, week in, week out, being out here, seeing over many years and all the different, you know, things we've had to tackle with the schedule or other changes to tournament regulations, the last couple of years have been very positive because there are more and more players actively engaged every day in thinking about the PGA Tour. It's an, it's an association of professional golfers and how to make it better. So like Jay said, I mean, I feel that every day in player dining and on the range and when we see players, I think that's probably one of the most positive outcomes of the last couple of years. I'll have Doug and then Zach, please. Jay, as you talk about, over here, sorry, as you, um, Talk about the confidential nature of the discussions going forward on the on the agreement. Uh, it's one thing not to have answers or thoughts or speculation for a public question, but how do you deal with players 
who also want to know stuff are frustrated and, and feel like they were left in the dark in the first place mm -hmm. and go to meetings and come out of it and say, we didn't learn anything new. I'm mean, surely they're getting, I would think they're getting frustrated by that. I think the way that we, or the way that we're dealing with that is that we're following our governance. And we have six player directors that are on our board. As I just mentioned, uh, we have uh, an advisor in Colin Neville that's, who's advising them. Uh, we have an investment bank in Allen and Company. We've had the opportunity to, as Tyler just mentioned, um, really going back to June 6th to have individual conversations, to have a two and a half hour player meeting at the Travelers Championship, to have a player meeting uh, at, in Memphis, to having so many one-on-one -on -one conversations where we're talking about the process that we have, the transparency that we're gonna be providing uh, as would always be the case with our player directors um, and letting them know that this is standard. Like any time you talk to um, you know, a leader of any other organization, once you get to this position, um, it's pretty standard that you know, there, there isn't a lot that you're gonna be able to share, but we continue to reinforce the fact that the framework agreement is ultimately, is the path that we're on um, and when we're able to share more information, we will. Um, but it's also, I think they also understand that with the governance we have in place, you know, we're not going to be able to, you know, it's our job to put forward the best possible um, construct with PIF for the future. And we're going to take that back to our board. And ultimately, they're going to decide whether you know, we're going to move forward with it. I think players have an, a, a comfort level that ultimately that's, you know, that, that process is one, is that's, that's a process that they're getting more comfortable with now that they understand it. A, a quick follow from, yeah. uh, from your perch, how, how would you gauge um, the, the mood of the players from, from June 6 to now? And if it's changed, what and why is, has it changed? I think you'd have to ask the players that, but for me specifically, um, first of all, the players are focused on the FedEx Cup playoffs and the Tour Championship. And I, 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 I have, from my conversations and from the great work that our team has done, um, I think if I were to succinctly put it, and this is the way Jack Nicholas put it to me, the proof is in the pudding. And so I think players are now saying, okay, I understand what we're trying to accomplish and why we've taken this step. Um, I understand that, you know, the confidential nature of what we're dealing with and how you plan to handle that within the governance. And at this point, I think players are focused on their play and they know, you know, as we move forward and certainly as we move towards the end of the year, um, there's a responsibility and expectation as from, you know, from them towards towards me and the team that, you know, we're going to be in a position to communicate um, a positive outcome for the PGA Tour.